Hey there everyone, today's video is about Richard Feynman, a lot of people's favourite scientist, and safe breaking. But I just wanted to point out at the start that most safes, or secure filing cabinets, actually have one dial. And if you've got a three number combination for example, you'll turn that dial in one direction, then the other direction, and then back in the other direction. And that's how you open it. But the mock-up that we've used in this video, and it is a mock-up, I can assure you, it's about as far from a safe as you could get. We've used three dials. That kind of makes things a bit more visual, a bit easier to understand looking at it in that way. But in most cases, the sort of safes we're talking about will actually be using one dial. I don't want to get all the safe enthusiasts out there too fired up and angry in the comment section. But for now, here's Professor Bowley with his pretend safe and the story of Richard Feynman and his World War II safe cracking. I'm talking about Feynman and how he managed to crack safes when he was working on the atomic bomb project in Los Alamos in the early 40s. His wife had died, so early in the 1940s his wife died and he was stuck in the middle of Los Alamos, not able to get out, it was a sort of desert area around there. He was stuck with lots of other theoretical physicists, so he needed something for amusement and as a hobby he tried cracking open all the safes in Los Alamos. Now they, they had new purpose-built uh, safes with locks on them that made by the Mosler Lock Company. You can imagine a hundred numbers for this, a hundred numbers for that, a hundred numbers for that. A million, a million possible settings. And if you fiddle them around, it'll take about five seconds to do it. So it will take you about, if you tried to crack it, it will take you about 60 days. On the average it'd be 30 days, but 60 days if you, if you screw up and, and it takes the last one to open it. Well, Feynman was a group leader, so he was given one of these in his office to keep all the top secret files that he might come up with. So he knew how this worked mechanically because he fiddled around with it. He just fidget with anything. He wanted to know how it worked. And he found by trial and error, suppose the number should be 20 it was set at. Actually, it started at 25, and a lot of people didn't change it from 25 nor 25. That was the default. And, and, you know, if he wanted to crack the safe, a lot of times people left it at the default setting because, uh, you know, it's the easiest one to remember. Suppose he set it at 20. Now, he found that if he tried to set it at 20 and it opened, he could also set it to 21 and it would open or 22. There was some slack on this. This was not mechanically perfect. So there was a bit of tolerance, plus or minus two, on every single number, which meant that if you set it at 20, it could be 21 or 22, or 19 or 18. And the same for this dial, and the same for this dial. So now, if you go through all the combinations, you only have to do 3, 8, 13, and so on, every fifth one, to make sure you cover them all. So there are only 20 settings for this, 20 for that, and 20 for that. So automatically that's gone down, oh I can't do it, can you do it in your head Brady? It's yeah. really quite difficult. 8,000 different settings. Now that becomes doable mechanically, it will take you something like 10 hours working solidly overnight and you could do it. And he could do that, he worked out how to do it. He found out other ways of doing this. He found that most people will set a birthday, an anniversary, some well-defined date, that, I don't know, the Independence Day in the United States of America, whatever, and it would not be a, an ordinary number because if it's going to be, say, my birthday, which is the 21st of April, if anybody wants to send me presents, there's a 21st, 04, 04 is there, and I'm born in 1946 which is down there. So for the top one, which is the, the days of the month, there are typically 30 days in a month. So let's suppose there's just 30 and never 31. 30 days in the month, you would need to set it in six different positions. Now for the months, there's 12 months in the year, so you need not two, but three for that. So now we've got six settings here, three settings there, and for the the year, well now the year, if it's some date, it's going to be something in the past. So how long back in the past is somewhat arbitrary, but suppose 45 would do, and then it would be nine. He was doing it in 1942 or three or four, all right? So the test would be somewhere around there. So 45 is the natural number to look at because then you don't have to go back into the previous century. Six for this one, three for 
this one and 9 for that one. And you multiply them together, you get 162. So that's 162 different settings. Five seconds for each, 162, that's 800 seconds. It's about 12 minutes. So he could go in, and if somebody had chosen one of those dates, instead of having 8,000, he's got 162, he can do it in 12 minutes. On the average, it will be six minutes because he might reach it in the first go or he might reach it after 12 minutes, but he would only require 12 minutes. So he would go in and make a big fuss of going into the office and say, I'm not going to show the secrets. These are top secret stuff. I don't want everybody to know my secrets. And he'd carry in a bag with tools, screwdrivers, picks, all sorts of things that people would think you crack safe with. Shut the door and in 12 minutes he would do it. He'd take a magazine in with him. Sometimes he'd get it done straight away and he'd do some exercise and wait for 20 minutes just to make sure everybody believe it was tough work doing this and then he'd come out with a bit of sweat on his brow saying that was hard work. So those were the main techniques that he used. 162 means that this isn't safe and using your birthday or anniversary is not safe. But after that he learnt another trick and he got the number down to 20. Out of all these million he, there were 20 and it turns out that if you open the safe and leave it open and there's a little drawer on the bottom and he, he goes into somebody else's office. He chats to them, the, the safe is open. He fiddles with all the knobs and after two years of practice he got these two sorted out by fiddling around with the knobs when the safe was open in somebody else's office. He'd go back afterwards and they don't realise he's been doing this and writes down these two numbers in a little book and says such and such. So by the end of the war, he could go into anybody's office. He's got the last two numbers. There are 20 settings. It takes him a minute and a half to open the safe or less. So he really has to spin it out. He has a reputation of safe cracking. and Everybody thinks he knows how to use picks, but he's just used human nature, the tolerance of all this, and deviousness, just to show how clever he was. He was doing it just to show how clever he was, and um, yeah, he was he was obnoxious. He would like to be one up on everybody else, um, but there was a security problem there. And the guy who shared a room with was the guy who gave the secrets to, of the bomb to the Russians, which was Klaus Fuchs. He was a roomie of his. But for all his showing off about safe breaking, it turns out the real spy was in the room with him. Yes, but I don't, I don't, uh, yes. <laughs> when you look at this, now that we live in worlds where you have a little security code for everything, this seems unbelievably primitive, phone hacking and everything else going on. But people weren't really, you know, if you're a scientist, you're not really looking at the other guy next door and wondering whether he's letting all your secrets out.